Well, guys, we're going to go over Anders' um, 4321 custom tactics video. We're going to go through it, and I'm also going to go through his tactics and then show you my variation and show you some gameplay of it as well. Uh, this video is sponsored by Patreon, so it's patreon.com forward slash no guys. We want to get better at FIFA. We've well, FC now. We've already introduced uh, uh, a new video recently how to defend the wings and cutbacks. But um, going into Anders' tactics, so this is the one that he gave. This is from the Rebels Gaming um, actual um, Instagram page. A shout out to Rebels Gaming for posting this. Um, balanced is what he's got for the defensive style 50, um, 70 balanced and direct passing. 30 and 6 players inside the box, and then we're on 1 of 1. And these are the instructions. So I'm going to go through his ones. I'll play the game. And then I'll give you my advice for the average player like yourself, how you invent this inside your game. So he's got the goalkeeper and comes across the super keeper. The goalkeeper is going to come out aggressively sometimes. Um, the left back is on stay back. Um, I think this is on default. Um, both the centre backs are on balanced. And the right back here is left on balance. Now, one thing he's done in, in, in his video um, is that he, if you go over to them, I'm just going to scroll over to the right back role. He actually puts the right back on balance. Now... Um, I believe you could do this on either side, but you have to flip the instructions because he wants one of his right backs going forwards. He then has um, what the right centre mid on stay back cover centre, the centre mid on stay back cover centre, the left centre mid on cover wing, and the right forward on come back and offence. So that's going to make the Oshawala come back to right mid and the Binya come back to left mid. And then in strike, he's got stay central. Uh, for the main striker and then the left forward it's on stay central stay forward so what this will basically do is this will make the Binya go to left mid inside the game and it'll make Oshawala come back to right mid and Tanali and Dunn will be in the middle and it will defend in the 4-4-2 we're going to go through a live gameplay example I'm going to show you how it works in a game okay we're going to go into the game I'll give you a bit of a live commentary I'll explain to you what I feel what you should change, what players you should also need. And I'm also going to show you how the formation feels. Um, this is the exact same one that you saw in the beginning. So we're going to go over it. Um, I've put, um, because we need an attacking player, I'm taking this play off. And I'm going to put Lorente here because I believe with the right back going forward, you need an attacking play in that role. And the rest of the team is going to be fine. I'm just going to move Sun into the central striker role. And I'm going to put Smith on the wing. And the way I'm going to play this is I'll kind of play how an average player will play. But I'll kind of add my own gameplay into this as well. Keeping it base football because I think that's the best way of describing this. Um, we got it in my attacking slot. Don't forget when you change formation, it normally takes some time inside the game for the formation to change and sometimes i go quiet this is actually recorded live so i'm actually playing right now um so if you do hear me ever stop or i try to explain something please do that in mind so when the formation changes now we're going to see straight away i'm just going to move the goalkeeper here from this set piece okay now first why when, when i test the formation i always analyze for example from the goalkeeper i look at the raid and i see how are these players positioned so okay i can see here we can see we've got the right back going forward. So you can see instantly we've got the outlet player, the right back. Now, the way to probably use right back players to overload on the right hand side. So you see we've got Oshawala, for example, over there. You see we've got Oshawala over there. So that is where you use the, the actual formation to overload that side. So I'm just going to bring Oshawala there forward, bring the ball to Dunn, got the ball with Lorente. And presumably this may be the, fa the favorite side that Anna's likes going down. Now, be careful when you use your left back as well, because in obviously in this situation here, nice movement, nice goal. That's a direct pass coming in. Just be very careful when you move your left back forward, because your right back is going forward as well. So you don't want to be left with two centre backs at the back. Um, and you can see, let me just get the ball back to my opponent. If I look at the radar here, can you see how we're defending in a 4-4-2? See how the team is naturally progressed in the 4 2. So, this is quite an aggressive formation. You can see, then we transfer to the 4 3 2 1. You can see the Binya goes into that role. Nice movement there. You can see the Binya kind of moves into the role. So, I'm going to give the ball back to my opponent again. I'm not going to score, just give the ball back to my opponent. Have a look at my team shift. So, I'm going to control Son here because he's a striker. So, you can see how my team shift, Lorente goes back to right back. Then you can see the Binya then makes the midfield. Oshwala, Oshwala then comes to make that right back. So that is how you defend out of possession. It does defend in a 4-4-2. So bearing in mind, this is going to be quite an aggressive formation. you got that 70 depth as well. So the players are going to apply pressure as well off the ball. Not 71 though. 70. Interesting take on why is it, seven, not why is it 70, not 71. 
both things do work. So you can see when you attack, it is a 4-3-2-1. Now what I would say is you would probably need a defensive play in this position. The person in this role, I wouldn't, Lorente can probably get the job done. But I'll say you probably want someone quick. Someone quick to burst down inside of the wing. When you lose the ball, you've got to be a bit more passive here because you see you haven't got that right back. And you can see here Gavardio is getting dragged towards the center. And if I wasn't defending well enough, I would have got exploited down the wings. I think the perfect thing to do here is do some one twos like this. And uh, that's what I say. Be careful if you lose the ball. You can see that I've lost the ball. Try to select the centre back and try to run back into position. Wait for the right back to come close and then commit. And I don't know why my player went into a random auto tackle there. I didn't request that. But you see when I went forward with Lorente there, you've got to be very, very careful. Someone like Lorente is a very, very, very skilled player, one of the best players inside the game. He's always doing those step overs every 10 seconds, always keeping the ball safe. Every time you lose the ball, there's a chance that you could get countered in behind. That's something I wanted to mention to you. So when you're using this formation, be very, very careful. Same thing when you're getting pressed. Your right back is not going to be there with your back line. But that's a good thing because maybe you can now use your right back as the outlet player. So let's say, for example, if you're struggling with a press, that right back can be that player to help you outside. I would probably say you do need someone here with a high medium or, um, or I would say a high, high work rate. Get the ball here and get the ball with Smith. Also, you ideally need someone with high, high work with someone that can go up and down equally up the pitch. But to be honest, I generally I like I like the formation, the way that it moves. It's pretty standard 4-3-2-1, and it defends in a 4-4-2. It's a very, very good formation. The only thing I would say is transitionally, you have to be very careful. This is why I was very um skeptical to releasing very early on um, one that defends in a 4-4-2. With a high level play, it's completely different. Because like, let's say I change it up now. Let's say I'm going to keep retention of the ball. It's knowing, for example, when to make the pass and when to dribble. It's not like, okay, knowing like, okay, I can't go through here. But if I sprint through this gap and bait that player, then I can go through. So it's knowing when and where you can move. So I think with the right back, my suggestion would be not to use the right back to dribble with the ball, but use that as supplementary play. And as I said, you, that's why you need that pace for both left backs. and so right backs, he was going to defend the cut back. And you can see we've got 4-4-2, we've got the build-up play, we've got Oshirala, we can do that 1-2, we can see Lorente. Now you create that 2v1 situation, get the ball here, got a bit lucky there, misjudging it back. 1-2, bringing the ball into the centre mid. Now we've got both the right centre mid and the centre mid on stay back while attacking. So you can see you're going to have these two players inside the middle to always pass the ball to. And that means the Binia is the player that's going to be getting forward. You see the Binia on just the corner of my eye. You can see the Binia is going forward. Good thing is if you're under pressure as well, you can see Lorente completely free on the other side. You can see. Now one thing you can do as well, just a quick nil guys, quick tip, is you can also use hug the sidelines. You're going to drill the ball back. Get the ball inside the box. Then you can see that's the Binia, the attacking centre mid. You're kind of creating an extra player. So what you can do as well is you can use hug the sidelines. Now, press up on your D-pad, then press right. You like to hug the sidelines. One thing I would say is um, you've got to be careful with this formation as well because the centre mids, there's no CDMs in this formation. So the centre mids sit pretty high. The reason why I say hug the sidelines is very good because most attacking players aren't stay central. Um, you can see that you're not, they're not actually playing in a wide position. It's a nice run there by Smith. Uh, you can see, look, you got Lorente hugging the side. You see that? So this could be a really good outlet player with hug the sidelines. And you can see the Binia, I think the Binia might be pushed out wide because I don't know if the Binia's got stay central on her. But if you put stay central on the Binia as well, which you can't because she's a centre mid. Um, I don't think she'll go to left hand side. We can see we're gonna have a look now when we attack. Um, because Dabinia is not a wide play, although she's a left centre mid in theory, she acts as a centre mid, left centre mid, not a left mid. So she won't adhere to the the kind of instructions to go and hug the sidelines. Because when you use hug the sidelines, all the wide players, so for example, a left back, right back, left mids, right mids, left wing, right wings, they will touch the sidelines. But because in this system, um, they're centre mids, they shouldn't really go wide. Um, but that's the one thing I'll say. Actually, I like it so far. I think it's a quite, it's a balanced formation. It's a bit more aggressive on the defense, defend, defending end. You've got to be very careful about switching. You've got to know when to switch, where to switch, where not to lose the ball. Although you can use your right back, you've got to be patient. So in the next the second half, it, Kind of because I've already explained it in the first half how the formation works. We're going to try a lot more to play a bit more natural gameplay just to show you an example of how I would play with it as well. 
inside the game. And again, I'm just going to quickly show you hug the sidelines first. And um, just to show you that the Binia or the left centre mid doesn't go towards the wide area. You can see you've got Dunn and Tonali in the middle. The Bean is that player kind of making that third player running inside the box. Then you've got the three players up front. And then you've got the right back on the right hand side to provide support. That's why that right centre mid in the two centre mids, the right centre mid on stay back while attacking is so important. Because if the right back goes forward, then you could be left exploited so you can use that right center mid to cover so i do think pace is very important but you can see here we've got hug the sidelines and you see both the left mid and right mid so left back and right back are very wide but you can see look, the bean is actually quite central you can see that 30 attacking width quite narrow so you know what i'd probably recommend hug the sidelines on but let's just turn it off play this a bit more natural get the one two and again that's done but just be very careful about bringing done for as i said because you're going to have lorente so you can also try to supplement the run with Lorente, all about timing there. Then you can just go with the, the cheeky cutback as well. That's a good option. Again, be careful when you lose the ball with Dunn because you may have no right back at all. I would say that right mid, that right center mid has to be someone that's quick on the ball. You can play a bit aggressive here. Quick 1-2, one, 1-2 two, one, two again. Making that run. We're going to wait for Lorente. Wait, 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 wait. We can see my opponent has fell for the bait. Make that first time pass and then go for a typical direct passing goal inside the box. Now you saw in that situation how we kind of made it. If I go back to the highlights here, you can see the first goal that we scored. That's the left center mid the De Binha. You can see Lorente already on the top right hand side. Um, when I get the ball with De Binha, you can see I have then a, a, a mismatch. My opponent has then committed. Then I can just do a quick easy goal. It's not really good representation. It's a nice movement from the players. Um, I'd probably recommend, I'd probably say get it behind is probably the better thing to use here. Um, if we end up going to our second goal, for example, over here, you can see we're using Lorente. We've got the three players in the middle. We do an L1 triangle. We can see here there's more of a find the right space and mainly doing overlaps, especially outnumbering your opponent on the right hand side. You sort of evidently here with, with the with Lorente, we kind of waited. See so yeah, we let Lorente go. We kind of pretend it's a pass there. Then we cut inside the middle. And then you can see, because Lorente is the right back, you still have three players centrally. They're all basically in the middle. And because they're all in a, in a tight, confined area, is a mismatch for your opponent. We're using Tonari to bring the ball going forward. And then you can see when we get the ball here with Sun, there's a complete mismatch. Because you see here, my look at my opponent's right uh, left back. See how the left back has to kind of commit to Lorente. And therefore, that creates an extra player inside the middle because Oshawala, the right forward, is now occupying the space in between the right back and the right centre back. Sun is in the middle. And then because of the narrow attacking width, you've got Smith internally very short. And that's what helps build up that, that space inside the box. So overall, it's a very good formation from that perspective. Now, what's my verdict on this formation and what change would I make for the average player? At the end, I would say this is a very good formation, but I would say it's more of a high level formation. You have to be very knowledgeable of when and where to make the pass, especially to that right back player. Now, what the thing I would suggest is um, the depth, I would probably say reduce it down. Um, if you want to be aggressive, you could go to anyone, but I would say maybe put this down to 50. Yes, I know you're, you're going to lose a pressing stance, but the reason why I say this is, is when you transfer from a 4-4-2 where you're pressing to a 4-3-2-1, there's a chance you can lose the ball because of the way the players are laid out. You've got to be careful when you're very, very aggressive because your right back will be out of position as well when you're pressing, when you're in the defensive phase and your right back has not returned to position yet. However, if you feel comfortable, leave it on 70. The build-up play, I think it's fine. I wouldn't recommend long ball. I think long ball for this formation is a bit too extreme. I think if someone tried to implement long ball with this, you have to be very, very quick defensively and very good from the switching wise. I would say balance is the way to go. Don't use slow build-up play because that would hinder your gameplay. Direct passing and the width is perfect. In fact, if you see my 4-3-2-1, I use the exact same width that Anders uses. Um, the players in the box can be fine. You can always increase this if you need to. Now... The thing that I'll probably say is um, I'll probably put getting behind on the right center forward as well. Um, and um, I'd probably put getting behind for um, the, the left center forward. You can leave the strike on balance because sometimes you kind of want that player to kind of 
not always getting behind. You kind of want them to go back a little bit and kind of get ready for that cut back. Um, I think it's actually a very good formation, a very, very solid formation. Um, the left center mid, you need someone here that can attack. Um, this is going to be someone that defends in a 4-4-2 on the left-hand side. So you're going to need ideally someone here who's got good pace. I would say good pace and good stamina. Um, a winger in this position is totally fine. So you see I played the Binia there, someone that's a good pass of the ball. Because when you're defending in a 4-4-2, this player also kind of inverts on the attacking phase. The centre mid, I would say someone that's defensive. You need someone here like a CDM, like an SCN. Someone's got a jockey play style. Because you lack the CDMs and you play very, very aggressive, you've got to have the pace to run back in time. So good sprint speed, good defence awareness. It's not always a good card. This card, I think, is more important than um, it's kind of made out to be. Um, there's no cover wing on this, I'm presuming because um, Anders wants us to defend in a 4-4-2 and only wants... Um, Dabinia to stay in that position because um, if you put this player on cover wing the game will mismatch who will stay on cover center unless you put Dabinia cover center then you put Sun on um, get it come back on the fence but I think um, he doesn't want to mess up he wants the consistency the way the formation moves so he doesn't want the game to confuse which player does move so he puts cover center on the right center mid and that way the right back can go forward um, I think you put overlap on but make sure you put overlap on that way the right back makes a, the run on the outside um, what I would say is um, this entire line is completely fine you need someone who's a good right back I would say someone like Hakimi or Carl Walker would be acceptable or Lorente, you need someone who's got a good pace, ideally good agility and balance so they can dribble the ball and make that pass inside the box. But I think here, pace is the most important thing, ideally high, high, if not worst case scenario, high, medium work rates, but they need to have that ability to come back. This position here, I think pace is important so you can recover. So I would say don't put a slow center mid here. You're better off, it's kind of a trick one. If you've got one slow center mid out of the two, you kind of got no choice, but you should not be using a center mid here with low pace. At least put a shadow on them is what I'd recommend. Overall, I would say it's a good formation. I really, really like it. Really, really good movement. Really recommend it. Not many changes that I would make. Maybe the only thing that I would probably do here is just put this player on the edge of the box. That way, if the player does go inside the box, yes, you have the extra running kind of coming in. But at least if you lose the ball with Lorente down the wing or your right back, at least Dunn is not inside the box. At least yeah, you're not done literally mind the pun but at least that way you're not done on the counter attack because if your right's in the mid and your right back is inside the box there's no one covering that right hand position so maybe just having this person on the edge of the box the only instruction i would change on that side and then just get in behind for both of these players but that is the instructions hope you enjoy this video thank you very much for watching take it easy and of course if you want to see any other formation reviews let me know down below uh just put the link to the to the youtube or let me know what the youtube tactics are and also put a link to their um um, um, also to their Twitter or whatever link you have and I'll have a look. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace out guys.